Couples in Boats written by Charles Perrault first published in 1697 Once upon a time there lived a miller who had three sons When the man died he left the mill to his oldest son The middle son received his donkey while the youngest son was given his only other possession a cat the young man felt sad seeing the young man sad the cat went over and rubbed his head against the young man's leg and spoke the young man was astonished yes i can talk said the cat and if you will but buy me a handsome pair of boots and a large leather bag i will make you a rich and happy man although the young man was poor and the few coins he had in his pocket was all he possessed he was so astonished that his cat could talk he went out and bought the boots and bag dressed in his brand new boots the cat put bait in the bottom of his leather bag threw it over his shoulder and set out over the fields using his cunning the cat caught a plump rabbit now he would have thought the cat would have gone back to the young man and given him the rabbit to eat as he was hungry but no the cat had bigger plans with the boldness of a lion this clever cat took his plump rabbit straight to the king and presented it as a gift from his master the marquis de carabas as he bowed low to the king he noticed the king's daughter sitting beside him she was beautiful and when she smiled the whole room brightened he bowed to the princess who smiled back every day the cat came to the king's palace presenting gifts from his master the marquis de carabas every day he bowed and the princess smiled back the cat soon became a favorite at the king's palace one day he overheard the king planning a carriage ride along the river bank with his daughter he raced home and told his master do what i say and fortune will smile kindly on us opportunity is knocking on our door the cat took the young man down to the river take off your clothes and get in the water as soon as the young man was in the water the cat took his torn and tattered clothes and hid them under a big stone then waited for the king as the king's carriage approached the cat raced out waving his hands in the air and shouting to the coachman help help my master the marquis de carabas is drowning when the king heard the name the marquis de carabas he ordered the coach to stop and the coachman to rescue the young man from the river the coachman pulled the astonished young man out of the river the young man tried to cover his nakedness what are his clothes asked the king sha he was set upon and robbed by wicked men who took all his possessions then we must fetch suitable replacements from the palace dressed in the finest of clothes tailored by the king's personal tailor the young man was presented to the king and his daughter he was taken by the daughter's beauty she noting his fine clothes and handsome looks fell immediately in love with him The young man was invited to join the king and his daughter in the royal carriage. As the carriage continued on its way, Hussein Boot raced ahead. He came across some peasants working in a field. Drawing his sword, Hussein Boot challenged them. 
when the king asks to whom these fields belong, declare the Marquis de Carabas, or it will be the worse for you. The frightened workers agreed. The cat then came upon a village. He told the villagers, when the king asks whose lands are these, declare the Marquis de Carabas or it will be the worst for you. These fields said and all the surrounding lands belong to the Marquis de Carabas. I am impressed, my lord, said the king. The king's daughter smiled and touched the young man's arm. The young man was even more astonished by the cleverness and the audacity of his cat. Puss in Boots came at last to a castle and knocked boldly on the door. The enormous door creaked open. And a large ogre presented himself. What do you want? The cat bowed low. I have heard you are fierce and cruel and that people are afraid of you. What of it? grunted the ogre. I have also heard you have powers to change yourself. Suddenly, a ferocious lion appeared where the ogre had stood. Puss quickly scrambled and scratched his way up a nearby curtain, well out of reach of the lion's sharp teeth. From his safe perch, high upon the curtain, the cat's confidence returned. That's easy, he chided, to change yourself into something so big. But you couldn't change yourself into, into say, something as small as a mouse, could you? With a sneer, the ogre transformed himself into a mouse. Before you could say, hey, diddle, diddle, the cat had pounced on the ogre. The ogre made for a very good supper. Just then, Puss heard the sound of the king's carriage pulling into the courtyard. He hurried out to greet the king and his daughter. Welcome to the castle of my master, the Marquis de Carabas, your majesties. So, this is your home, the king said to the young man. The young man had stopped being astonished by anything his clever cat caught up to. His time was now occupied in the company of the beautiful princess. The ogre servants were pleased with their new master and prepared the most wonderful banquet. After the feast, an engagement and a marriage, all in the one afternoon. The young man, the Marquis de Carabas, his wife, the princess and Puss in Boots all lived in the ogre's castle happily ever after.